How can a writer find the best keyboard to type with? And what are the fastest keyboards that are out there? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become A Writer Today channel. So I'm obsessed with finding the right tools and gadgets and peripherals. I've spent years and hundreds of dollars trying and testing different types of keyboards. I do this because I have an interest in them, but also because I sometimes get repetitive strain injury from typing so much. Sometimes I get over RSI by dictation, but I still need a good keyboard to edit drafts with and to use during the day. I've tried many different keyboards and in this video, I'm gonna profile some of the best that are out there so you can find the ideal setup for you. But first, I've got a couple of keyboard buying tips which will help you decide what's right. Firstly, consider what type of keyboard you want. Do you want a traditional keyboard which looks good on your desk? Or do you want a mechanical keyboard which is designed to encourage faster typing speeds? Next up, ask yourself how much space do you have? The space on your writing desk will dictate whether you can get a full-size keyboard with a numpad or something smaller and more compact. And remember, those smaller and more compact keyboards may look good, but if you've got bigger fingers like I do, they can also be a little bit more difficult to type on because the carriage return and the space bar can be closer to other keys. So do bear that in mind. Thirdly, ask yourself what's your budget. So while some keyboards can cost $100 and will get the job done, you can spend quite a bit more on premium mechanical keyboards. Some of them range over two to $250, which is quite a bit to spend on something that you're going to type with. And finally, ask yourself, what is your operating system? Because the keyboard that you use for Windows may not necessarily be one that works on a Mac. So it is best to investigate that. Now, quick primer, ergonomic versus default keyboards. So an ergonomic keyboard basically describes a keyboard that has a slanted profile, which enables you or provides you with more support for your wrists. I'll give you an example of one of the best ergonomic keyboards in a moment, but there's a big caveat. There's actually no real clear evidence of the benefits of ergonomic keyboards. In other words, it boils down to personal preference and how you like to type. So you may be able to use a default keyboard just fine assuming it's a good quality default keyboard. Second caveat relates to mechanical versus default keyboards. Now going into the ins and outs of mechanical keyboards is beyond the scope of this video. Suffice to say, if you're going to get a mechanical keyboard, ideally you'll get one that's easy to swap out the keys if something breaks. This way you'll get years out of the keyboard and you won't have to worry about repairs. I'd also ask yourself, do you want a loud mechanical keyboard or something that's more quiet? It does matter because loud mechanical keyboards may be fun to type with, but they can be really distracting for people around you or in your home environment. Now, again, with mechanical keyboards, they come in various different sizes and with different types of switches, which affects how much effort you have to use to depress the keys. So you can look into that as well. But the keyboard or mechanical keyboards that I'll profile in this video should help you get the job done. Let's dive into my choices. So for years, I typed with a traditional Apple keyboard. Then when I upgraded my last Mac sometime around 2017 or 2018, I got a new Apple Magic keyboard with it, but it had a painful design that was really difficult to type with. And to be honest, I've been reading about mechanical keyboards for years. So I decided to purchase a DAS mechanical keyboard. I got the DAS Keyboard 6 Professional. It cost me about $200 to import this particular keyboard. If you're looking for a professional, heavy duty mechanical keyboard, then DAS is probably the brand that you're going to start with. Now these are available in a variety of sizes with a variety of different types of switches and also for Mac and Windows. I typed with my DAS mechanical keyboard on and off for two or three years, but I eventually stopped using it for several different reasons. The first reason was I was typing in an office next to a room where people in my house sleep. And the DAS mechanical keyboard that I bought was the loudest, clackiest version. It was very loud and noisy to type with and it ended up keeping people awake. So I found I couldn't use it early in the morning or late at night. The other reason why I stopped using it is I was moving office one day and I dropped the mechanical keyboard on the ground and ended up smashing a part inside of it. I was pretty unlucky to do that because these are heavy duty keyboards which are designed to be easily repairable. But it would have cost me 50 or $60 to get it repaired and I figured I would just be better off getting a new keyboard. But I, the new keyboard that I bought was not a DAS mechanical keyboard. Instead, I found something else. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. Before I reveal my preferred mechanical keyboard, what if you're looking for a keyboard that's not mechanical in design, but which is still great to write and type with? 
then you can't go wrong with the Logitech MX Master Series of Peripherals, in particular the MX Keys. So the MX Keys starts at approximately $130, and it's available for Mac and Windows. I used one of these for about two years. I only stopped using it when a family member broke their keyboard, borrowed mine, and never gave it back. Now, because it's Logitech, it pairs quite well with your computer. There's no Bluetooth connectivity issues, and it works with Logitech peripherals, such as the MX Master 3S mouse. The only thing that you may want to consider buying to go along with this is a palm rest if you find that your wrists sometimes rest on the desk, which can induce RSI or repetitive strain injury. I particularly like this keyboard because each of the keys has a decline where the tips of your fingers can rest. And I found that compared to a traditional cheaper keyboard, this improved the quality of my keystrokes and reduced typos. It's an excellent keyboard to get if you're not right, quite ready to move into the world of mechanical keyboards. One of my favorite keyboards, which was released in 2021, is the Apple Magic Keyboard. I currently have the full size version, but you can also get a smaller size, which comes without the numpad. Now, I particularly like the Apple Magic Keyboard because it has a low profile and looks good on the desk. And it starts at $100, depending on what size you get. Now, obviously you're gonna need an Apple device if you're a writer and you wanna get the best use from this keyboard. But it does have a fantastic feature that I love and that's the Touch ID. Basically, you can log into any of your websites, tools and anything else that requires a password if you save those details onto Apple Keychain. Then all you need to do is put your finger on this and it will automatically log you into your Mac and then into your services of choice. It's a real time saver. But more importantly, what's it like to type on? Well, there's a few caveats. So a couple of years ago, Apple changed the profile of their keyboards. And to be honest, they changed it so much that the last version of Apple keyboards were horrendous to type on. I made an awful lot of typos and mistakes. So if you're gonna get an Apple Magic keyboard, don't buy an old one. Make sure it's one that was made in 2021 or later. Secondly, obviously you're only gonna get this if you have an Apple device due to the command key. And thirdly, if you are gonna get one, it works quite well if you're in the Apple ecosystem. In other words, if you're typing on an Apple MacBook, then you'll already have some muscle memory about where the different keys are. So it's gonna be pretty easy for you to transition to this. Now that said, the low profile of these keys may put off some fast typists, but it comes bundled with your Mac if you're gonna buy a Mac, so you will get a chance to try it. And it is a lot better than the default keyboards that come bundled with other computers. It's certainly one that I like to use a lot. Several months ago, I wanted to try writing with an ergonomic keyboard myself. I did some research and came across the Ergo K860 by Logitech. It cost me just over $150 to buy this keyboard. Now this particular ergonomic keyboard has a sloped wrist rest, so it's really comfortable to rest your hands on. In fact, it provides 54% more wrist support than traditional ergonomic keyboards. But not only that, it's a Red Dot Award design winner. If you're not familiar with the Red Dot design awards, they're basically critically acclaimed awards within the design industry that cover a wide range of categories from watches to clocks to even keyboards. So you can be sure that you're buying a keyboard which is well constructed and built to last. Now there's a version that you can get for Windows and a version that you can get for Mac. I got the Mac version because I use an Apple iMac the most. But most importantly, what was it like to type on? Well, I tried the ergonomic keyboard for three weeks. And to be honest, I couldn't transition from typing with a normal keyboard to an ergonomic keyboard. Changing muscle memory for my typing skills was simply too much. And to be honest, I found it a frustrating experience. It's not a criticism of the keyboard. It's well-built, well-constructed, and the buttons are pleasing to use. However, after three weeks, I became so frustrated that I returned the keyboard to Logitech and I was pleased that they took the keyboard back, no questions asked. That said, if, they, if you're looking for an ergonomic keyboard, this could be one to consider. And if you want to get an ergonomic keyboard that's not from Logitech, Microsoft also make a particularly popular version that you can get for your Windows computer. It's probably the best ergonomic keyboard along with the Logitech version that you can find today. So when I returned my Logitech ergonomic keyboard, I was left with a perplexing choice. What keyboard was I going to get to type with? I did a bit more research and I came across the Logitech mechanical keyboard. Now I've been following Logitech's peripherals for years and it was news to me that they've started to finally make mechanical keyboards. So here's the mechanical keyboard that I bought. 
And you can see here that it has a flatter profile than the ergonomic keyboard. And I'm pleased to say it's exceptionally user-friendly for typists and writers. It has some nice backlighting. It has a fairly sleek and minimal design. And it has some handy keys that you can easily customize using the proprietary Logitech software. Again, it's available for Mac and Windows. I got the Mac version and you can get a full size or a more compact version of this keyboard. I opted for the full size version so I could get the numpad. Now I've been typing with this for a few months. I have no plans to return it. And it's my favorite current mechanical keyboard. The battery life is unlike any other mechanical keyboard I've tried. It's got no flaky Bluetooth issues. And most importantly, my typing speeds are fastest when I use this keyboard over other mechanical keyboards and even the Apple keyboard. I'd recommend getting this keyboard if you're looking for a mechanical keyboard. And best of all, I type or write in an office next to a bedroom. I don't want to keep family members up at night if I'm working late or wake them up in the morning. This makes a slight clacking noise, but you won't hear it in the room next door. I would say this is Logitech's best keyboard to date, assuming you're comfortable with using mechanical keyboards. As great as the Logitech mechanical keyboard is, sometimes writers and typists look for more options. Perhaps they want a mechanical keyboard that has hot swappable keys. Perhaps they want one that makes more noises, a longer depress of the keys or hot swappable switches. Enter the Keychron mechanical keyboards. Now these come in a range of sizes from compact to full size. Any Keychron keyboard that you get will work on Mac and Windows and you can swap out any of the keys. It even has some pleasing or colorful backlighting that will light up the room when you start to type. Now I got this keyboard uh, several months ago. I actually opted for the more compact version, but I found I was making too many typos with the more compact version. So I subsequently upgraded to this version and I used it for several months. It was a relatively nice keyboard to type with. I found I made less typos than I made with a traditional keyboard and I really enjoyed the clacking noise. But why did I not hold on to it? Well, firstly, I found the keyboard was actually quite loud and it was keeping family members up or waking them up in the morning. So that was the first reason why I changed. But I also changed for another reason. So I'm on a Mac and I found the Bluetooth connection between this keyboard and my Mac was a little bit flaky. In other words, if I stopped using the keyboard for a little while, say 15 or 30 minutes, the keyboard would go into power saving mode and then it would take a few seconds to reconnect to the Mac. Sure, it was only a minor annoyance, but it was enough to interfere with my working day just a little bit. Perhaps I'm being pedantic, but I did find threads from other Reddit users on Mac who had the same experience. Now that said, your mileage may vary. It really depends what you're going to use the Keychron for and what size you want to get. And perhaps that's its biggest strength. If you're looking for a mechanical keyboard that's specific to your typing or writing workflow and that's budget friendly because these start at $100, which is cheaper than some other mechanical keyboards, then check out what Keychron make. It's also got a pleasing design that will look good on your desk. There are a couple of other keyboards that writers can try. But in summary, if you're on Mac, you can't go wrong with the latest Apple Magic Keyboard. You also can't go wrong with the Logitech MX Master series. I'd also recommend checking out the Logitech mechanical keyboards. Now it may sound like I love writing and typing with Logitech devices, but I'm also big into portable writing setups. Let me explain. One of my favorite writing setups for writers or for when I'm working on an article involves getting an iPad Pro and the official keyboard that goes along with it. I like it because the iPad Pro is minimalist and free of distractions. Obviously it's portable because it's a tablet, and when paired with a keyboard, it works almost like a laptop. It has fantastic battery life and I can decamp to the local coffee shop, order some coffee and get to work on the latest article for one of my sites. It's really pleasing to type on and where you, when you're using a writing app like IA Writer or Ulysses, it's a joy to use. Definitely one to check out. And of course, you don't necessarily need to use the iPad Pro. You could get the basic version of the iPad if you're looking for something that's more budget friendly. But what if you want to go really minimalist? Well, there's a particular old school writing device that came out in the early 2000s. It still has a cult following and you can pick these up on eBay for less than $100. It has no fancy screen, no internet connectivity, and no apps of any type. I'm talking about the Alpha Smart Neo. I got one of these on eBay for $50. It has a green LCD screen. All I can do is turn it on open one of the 10 files on the device. That's right, it just supports 10 files. 
and just start typing. In other words, if I was in a coffee shop, all I would need to do is bring this with me and I can simply start typing that first draft. Now it's powered by AA batteries and the batteries power this device for months. It's a bit like a giant calculator. That said, it's really lightweight and portable and durable. I've dropped this lots of times and had no issues with it. Of course, you're not gonna be able to connect this to the internet and to get the writing off the device and onto your computer, you have to use the bundled USB cable. That said, if you're looking for something that's going to help you write, which is nice to type with, and which is free of distractions, I'd also recommend considering picking up one of these. It has a cult following for a reason. It's called the Alpha Smart Neo, and you can usually get one of these on eBay for somewhere between 50 and $100. Those are my recommendations for the best writing setup today. Currently, I'm using the Logitech mechanical keyboard the most. I'm experimenting with the latest Apple Magic keyboard because I really love Touch ID. And when I'm on the go, I use one of the portable setups like I've just described a few moments ago. I've also got a detailed blog post where I profile some other keyboards that I asked some expert writers to review. So if you didn't like my recommendations in this video, go and check out that blog post. I hope you enjoyed this roundup of some of the best writing setups for typists and for writers. If you do, hit thumbs up. If you have suggestions for future content like this, let me know in the comments section below. And to get my latest video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.